well, it's about time. I finally pushed some of the stuff off my desk, or at least to the side. I've been meaning to make a video of this thing for a long time, and it's really freaking big. And I, uh, yeah, I've had it for like a year and a half or something. So we're finally going to do it. This is the Celebrate You Fed. <laughs> Ugh. The Universal Forensic Extraction Device. Ugh. What is with these companies and names? Anyway, this comes in a giant Pelican style case. I don't think it's actually a Pelican case because I think Pelican would have put their name on it. And um, I couldn't find this exact case. I did find like a sort of similar one by some other company, but I, I don't think this is actually Pelican. Anyway, this is a waterproof uh, rugged case with the, the pressure equalizer and all that kind of stuff. It's got these heavy duty latches and hell, it even has space for not one, but two padlocks. This huge case has been sitting in my place for quite some time. And to give you an idea of just how big this thing is, that's a disc case so yeah huge this device is very similar to the ume that we were looking at in a previous video which i'll link in so you can take a look at it it actually functions more or less exactly the same i mean it takes cell phone data from a source and can deliver it to a target it essentially uh, works the same way with the exception of advanced features so while this can do the same I have a new iPhone and I want to bring data from my old phone and put it onto the iPhone using a multitude of different connectors. It does do that, but it also does things like bypassing encryption and decrypting user data and all sorts of fancy things like you can just plug in a phone and if it's on the list of supported devices, you just say, show me what the lock code is. And it says, oh, press one, two, three, four to unlock. It just instantly finds it. It's amazing. This is normally only sold to specific government um, entities and, and specific corporate clients. You can't normally buy one of these. I just picked it up on eBay. I think I paid like a hundred bucks or maybe less than that. And it comes with a gigantic book of connectors a big pouch full of power adapter stuff, or charger stuff, a big power adapter, adapters, and all sorts of accessories. We'll get into all this stuff. I'm just doing a quick overview of it so we can get this damn thing off the desk because it's huge. So this normally comes with a silly rubber case. That's why you can see bits of glue and stuff because it was kind of attached to it permanently. And I ripped it off because it was really annoying and it got in the way it also had little doors on everything which again got in the way so i took all that stuff off so this is the device basic controls it's just got uh directional keys with an ok button f123 a c button which i think is cancel although i can't remember it ever actually working and a uh, power button on one side there's an sd card reader i think this can be used for either recovering data or storing data. I've used it for storing data. You just pop in a standard SD card and it will just reco recover data to it. Uh, the RJ45 connector, which is used for their serial based old school connectors for all the different phones, like there's a hundred of them. USB for all the modern ones, uh, IRDA, which I've never used. Same thing on the other side, there's stuff for a battery including a switch and like a power meter there's no battery installed it does have the little foam and a connector for it but yeah mine didn't come with it i don't know if it was removed before i bought it or if this particular one is just optional there's also this weird ribbon cable that runs over here i don't really know what the deal is with that i think these are all the connections to the various parts of the battery interface and it's just an optional Thing, but it's kind of weird that it's not covered up. One thing that I find a little unusual is it says power rating and it has 100 to 240 volt AC. This thing doesn't run on AC, it has a 12 volt adapter. Shouldn't it just say it's rated for 12 volts? That seems kind of weird. I mean, if it had a mains outlet, okay, but it doesn't. This is the adapter that it runs off, which is a uh, 15 volt 3.3 amp. 
And, um, oh, sorry, I said 12 volt, but it's funny that it says 12 volt, two amp here. At the top, there's a micro USB, sorry, mini USB for interfacing with your PC, ethernet, so the sync connect can connect to the internet and get updates. I have never actually connected this thing because I'm afraid it's gonna shut itself off because it's got um, software update and it keeps telling me the license is expired so it won't update anymore, but I'm afraid if it connects to it, it'll just totally kill it. So I'm not positive on how that'll react. Maybe we'll plug it in at the end. Uh, a serial connection, which is funny because it's a DIN connector like a, uh, like a Mac. So possibly that is for Mac interfaces and a um, couple USB ports. I think these can accept either flash drives or maybe even an external hard drive for recording data. The bottom of the device has a SIM reader, which reads your standard small SIMs. Uh, it also will accept smaller ones if you use an adapter, but it also has a slot here to read the full size, like credit card sized ones. So you can use both. It comes with several blank ones used for um, duplicating. So you can continue using the phone to, to receive calls, that sort of thing, like a dummy phone with the original SIM without actually modifying or touching the SIM because remember this is all for forensics so you can't just take a suspect's phone take the SIM out and put it into another phone and start you know trying to get evidence with it meanwhile what have you done with it it's been taken out of the phone something it could be written to on the new phone how do you know you need a chain of custody you need a chain of everything saying that this is not tampered with so this way it's all right in the phone and you can read it out in a way that will not write anything to the, the device and then just not use this phone at all. And you can just have it on whatever dummy phone that you're gonna work on, or you could even, you know, if you have to give it back or something, who knows, I don't, I don't know specifics of, of what they're doing with this, but in theory, you could duplicate it and then do your analysis on it if for whatever reason you had to give this back. The accessories pouch has all sorts of goodies, including just a standard, um, micro USB cable. This is the cable number 100. This is pretty much all you're going to use on a modern phone. There's also a small Bluetooth adapter used for some phones. It will also, um, oh, it's actually branded celebrate. I didn't realize that, but, uh, yeah, this is, this is requested with certain phones. You can, you can use it if needed. In theory, you could get a phone that's damaged, that sort of thing. Pretty much every single thing that comes with this kit has a serial, like a little printed label on it with like a code. I don't know if this is part of the forensics requirements that everything has a specific code so you can list all the components you used in case they request information on how exactly you extracted the data. Oh, I used a uh, cable number 100 from blah, 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 blah. So I don't know but everything has that on this. So this is a um, USB adapter that I believe is a step-up transformer to six volts because I know some of the devices need a six volt connection for charging. I guess some older phones use six volt for some reason. Uh, there's some sticker residue on this thing. It's either a proper switch mode transformer or just some kind of simple circuit. I'm, I'm not sure, it's pretty light and it just cannot converts to a little DC jack. There is a 12 volt power adapter for uh, powering the main unit from a car. Boring. This is the UFED BA5590 battery adapter. So I assume this is for some kind of battery pack. I don't know if this is a standard connector or if this is uh, some kind of specialized thing that they sell. Standard ESD brush, which of course has a label on it because you're gonna have that. So, for all your cleaning and scrubbing needs, this is just a long mini USB cable as opposed to the micro one. The SIM adapter, and it's not like uh, the regular ones where it's just like a little piece of plastic that you sit your, your smaller SIM into to make it a large one. This one actually is like gigantic and it sits outside of the unit, like you plug it in here and it would be sticking out but I've never had I've never had to use this thing all the phones that I've used with sims they've, they've been um, 
unlocked, so I had no new reason to just load data off the SIM. And these are access cards, which are, as far as I know, just blank SIM cards that you can transfer data to. And it came with a bunch of them. And as far as I know, they've never been used. They don't have any case data or anything written on them. Actually, I should probably try reading off them at some point, but I think they actually came in a pouch now that I think about it, like a sealed pouch. Might have opened that up a long time ago. Anyway, these have a uh, case, evidence, blah, 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 officer. You know, this is proper forensic stuff. So you can, again, record all the information you need so you can um, refer to this in court, that sort of thing. And put that away. And lastly, there is a Faraday bag. So I have this uh, old Blackberry here, and you can see that it's getting five bars. I believe this is on the Verizon network. And if we take this phone, I couldn't fit my phone in it. It's a uh, LG V20, it's gigantic. It doesn't fit in this thing at all. And seal this up, and then you're supposed to roll this and then seal it again. And once it's in there, you can see it's actually lost its signal. No bars. The idea behind this thing is if you have to uh, take one of the uh, suspect's phone, you can wrap it up in this and they can't remotely delete it as soon as you turn it on. So one of the main aspects of this thing is that it's universal and you can connect it to pretty much any phone that exists. So the way that works is that there are a million different phone connectors. And there's even more inside the case, but I'm not gonna get those out because they're all um, on the top side of it and it'll just be a pain off to put them all back, but they're all basically the same thing. There's a mixture of older ones that use weird funky serial connections, newer ones that use USB, these older ones that use uh, kind of push-in modules that replace the battery, all sorts of different ones for all the various phones made by lots of different manufacturers. There's one Samsung, uh, Motorola, Sony, you name it, they're all here. There's also a phone charger included in this thing. Now, the unit will charge phones on its own. They probably just want it so you can charge up a phone while you're doing something else, or at least not draining the main battery. So this is a very small USB battery bank. It's not particularly powerful. It's a one amp output, but uh, there's not much capa capacity on it. It's only eight watt hour and it's pretty tiny. It does have a little, oh, well, it's still got the plastic on it. it has a little p battery check gauge and that's about it. And uh, yeah, micro or mini USB. So it's kind of a pain to charge these days and just a single USB output. Inside it's exactly what you'd expect, just a simple battery charging circuit and a USB output. That's it. That's uh, pretty old, just based by the uh, based on the amount of stuff that's on it. Like it has a bunch of larger components, a whole bunch of discrete chips, whereas a modern one would have a much simpler board design. Although it looks like they've put the protection circuitry on this board instead of directly on the pack. There's like a little fuse in there or something thermal cutout. Also included are dozens of these adapters. Oh, this looks like it's another one of these adapters that, oh no, this is smaller. This looks like it's just a regular mini ja, uh, mini barrel plug. The other one I think is much larger. It has a uh, boost converter in it, but yep, this is just an arrangement of uh, various connectors. They're all mostly mini jacks and stuff like that, mini barrel plugs. Some of them are actually very difficult to track down normally. This one in particular, uh, this was on, what was it? I think it was a Nokia phone. And I was trying to charge the phone and I just could not find anything that could charge it other than this teeny tiny connector. Even tracking this down on eBay, I couldn't. I didn't even know what to look for. It's like a one millimeter uh, mini barrel jack, but yeah, I. I couldn't find any. I think I found one adapter, but it was expensive. Lastly, there's the CD with its software, which I believe requires a license key that is not included in this damn pack. So I don't know what the license is. I can't install it. There's also a user manual, uh, crud from that battery pack. Uh, there's a standard pack, and then there's the ruggedized one, which is what we have today. Looks like the, um, 
battery charger kit is optional because that section's covered up in this. Uh, it may not come with all of them. But on the inside, version 4B. Uh, this is um, 2009, so it's a somewhat older model. But anyway, it just has basic um, operation and how to go through all the different modes. And it's a pretty simple to use device. Admin password. Huh. Might come in handy. Uh, I think I did see the thing. I think I did see a section that asked for a, an admin password. That might actually get us into some stuff. And other than that, it looks like it's just the usual, the usual stuff. So it's a pretty simple device to figure out when you're doing. Uh, okay, there's a software update log. Oh, and there's a bit of technical information here. Uh, blah, blah, blah. These are just connectors. Okay, it's 100 megabit Ethernet. It uses an X scale in from Intel, 520 megahertz, 100, 104 megahertz memory capacity. <laughs> okay. And 128 megs of RAM, 64 megs of cache, or sorry, flash, and uh, Windows C. Okay. Well, I think that's all for the manual. Looks like that just removes the battery module. Oh, okay, there's more. All right, I got it. There's more screws behind the battery module. So it uses kind of an old school style staggered ribbon connector or IDC connector. And we're in and everything's on the back. Uh, this just looks like it's a, an Ethernet controller from SMSC. And that looks like it's it for the back, aside from a whole bunch of uh, passives. And you have the big SD, or sorry, SIM reader for the full size one on the back. And the IRDA sensors. And let's see if this just comes out. I believe there's a connector that links the this board with another one that's why it's kind of difficult to get out oh that's just ribbon connectors huh that's funny it's actually kind of this exact same arrangement as the other model um, like I said they do make versions of this that just run standard um, copying software so it stands to reason that this is pretty similar to the even the older gray model that we looked at so again we have just kind of a standard LCD with a, a standard kind of keypad, membrane keypad. I'm not going to take that stuff apart, not really worth the time. Looking at the motherboard, this one's very similar to the other one we took a look at. It's a little bit more complex, but it's basically the same thing. Uh, this is a the main CPU, which is an Intel X scale. It's the uh, PXA270, which is an ARM-based CPU. There's some Samsung memory, some Intel flash, uh, an Altera Max CPLD. There's also a fruit fly buzzing around my face. <laughs> There's a, um, the SD card reader, SIM reader. You can see it. it has a little module here that just slides in. And on the other side, there's the smart card reader, bunch of passives uh, as an SMSC uh, Ethernet controller, I would imagine. Bunch of decoupling and just a couple minor components. It's also the IRDA receiver transmitters on each side. Uh, I haven't actually found a phone that uses that yet. I haven't seen any options. It must only be um, pretty old phones. Uh, I imagine mostly like old flip phones. Although I, I have um, read a couple flip phones and they did actually have like a service connector. So I don't know. I don't know what phones use that. Usually when you go to read a phone, it will say, do you want to read from Bluetooth or serial or whatever? And I haven't seen any that say infrared. Uh, there's a big section here for power. Uh, this will be providing all the rails for the CPU. It'll also be, be providing the five or I believe six volt on some models uh, power for the, uh, the phone itself because it does charge through these ports, both the serial and uh, USB. And uh, yeah, it looks like it's a, probably a six or eight layer board it's a pretty dense board, except for this end for some reason. 
Uh, the DC to DC converter section is especially dense, but that's pretty much standard for any power supply because you want to keep uh, all the components very close together, or as close as possible usually. Uh, but the rest of the board is pretty dense too. And I think that's about it. It's not a very exciting board. There's a couple empty spots. I, don't, I didn't see any bodges on it. But I think what I'm going to do is just throw this thing back together and we'll uh, play around with some phones. I took a closer look at the battery compartment and it does actually have a bunch of active circuitry in here. It looks like it's all the battery protection circuitry and probably all the stuff needed to do the indicator lights and report back to the uh, CPU what, what the power levels are and whatnot because uh, it is a pretty complex board for something that just looked like it was uh, driving some LEDs but yeah it's just hidden away in this little compartment with a couple screws and a little plastic cover okay so this is an example of a phone I picked up off eBay uh, this is a Samsung A597 I think it's the Eternity or some nonsense anyway uh, yeah this is a really beat up cheap ass phone that I got in a big lot of phones so anyway uh, I've turned on the password, so if you uh, unlock it, this is an early Android based one, I believe, and it wants a phone code. So we don't know the code because we just got the phone, so we try like one, two, three, or whatever, but who knows, it could be tons of digits, so you have no idea what it is. So you go into this and you go extract passwords. Oops extract passwords. Um, normally you'd go down to uh, Samsung, but I've already done this. So we'll just go to recently used. See, it's the Eternity 2. And now it wants to, um, it wants to either save it as a file or just display the code. So let's just do display. Six hours later. This is strange. It looks like I found either a bug or a limitation on this particular model. Now, originally when I got this, the SIM, the, the password wasn't enabled. So I enabled the password and um, it was using the one that it, it came with, like someone had already set it, but they just didn't have it enabled. So it, it's weird. When I was trying to unlock it at the lock screen, it was saying it couldn't communicate to the phone. It was just blinking on and off the, the PC connection. Now, if I have it unlocked, which obviously wouldn't work realistically if this was, was um, someone's phone that you couldn't open up. But uh, yeah, if I go to it and do display and go start, boom. Okay, so it gets the code immediately, 1979. When you're on the screen to disable the lock, you can hit off and on this particular phone, it goes, hey, wait, you need the password to do that, a PIN number. So we'll just use the code that it's, uh, it's found, 1979. I did not type that right. <laughs> this phone is horrible. The, the touch sensitivity is all over the place on this thing. Anyway, so we'll try that code, and it disabled the password. So the, the code is right. Just for some reason on this particular model with the settings I had enabled, it wouldn't release the lock. I don't know why um, other phones, it will do it when you start it up and it says you need a password or a pin number and it will just unlock it right away. So I'm not really sure if that's just a glitch with this particular phone. It could be something that's fixed with the software update on this thing, but okay. So I've switched to a different phone. This is a Blackberry Bold or something or other. I don't know. Blackberries, despite uh, being part of my national heritage, uh, are confusing to me, especially on the fact with the fact that this is a touchscreen, but you have to physically press the phone. It's actually a button. It's very weird. So when you when you just touch things, they don't do anything. You have to actually physically click it, which I'm sure I would get used to if I used it all the time. But it just seems really weird. Um, this particular phone. Uh, is unlocked already. I had to reset it because I didn't have the password and this will not de decrypt a Blackberry. Possibly newer ones will. I don't know. But um, we can do the data extraction on this one. So if we go to extract phone data and uh, let's see if auto detect works. Auto detect is a little iffy. Oh, it did. Okay. I'm oh, sorry. It's Blackberry Storm 2. 
So we go yes, and then it will ask what kind of data we want to take out of it. Uh, there's no memory card installed on this one, so we're going to skip that. Where do we want to put the data? Uh, we need a, an SD card here. So SD card, and then it will say, what do you want to take out of it? Let's take all the good stuff, pictures, videos. I don't think there's really anything on this, but whatever. Uh, there might actually be a picture of moose, and that's it. And, uh, okay, so connect the data cable, blah, blah, blah. And, okay, if the handheld is subscribed to a BlackBerry Enterprise, blah, 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 or whatever the hell that thing is, yeah, 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 this doesn't affect us. You can just skip that. So it's going to initiate a connection to it. So it thinks it's connected to a computer. And now it is attempting to extract the data. Now this kind of does this whole, like, connecting and disconnecting thing. Yeah, there's a video of one of my cats on it. So uh, we'll go yes, and now it's extracting the file. And now it, first it extracts it, I think it extracts it to internal memory and then it saves it to the SD card as a separate operation. But now it's grabbing all the little things like texts and that sort of thing, none of which should exist. So it'll just be generating reports. And there you go, there's the IMEI number and blah, 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 and it's on. So there you go, it's all on this and you can go and look through the files. You could also extract it to a, another um, unit if you wanted to, uh, I believe. At least it should. I'm, I'm now realizing that I haven't actually tried um, copying it from one phone to another. I don't know if uh, these might be disabled on this thing. Oh, shut up, you, you just identified the phone. You're telling me you can't identify it now. This is what I'm saying about the auto detect. It's kind of wonky. And yeah, <laughs> ridiculous. So uh, Blackberry uh, CDMA, and this is the 9550 source. Yeah, see, there is no there is no option to send it to a target phone. So it may enable when you plug in another phone, but I guess this one just has this to say. I tried running the installer for this in a virtual machine and it does install, but all the stuff asks for serial numbers and I don't have a serial number, but it did imply that um, you get the serial number, gener you, you generate it using the phone, the unit itself. Yeah, you're supposed to go into services and then upgrade and then there's supposed to be an upgrade or sorry, the the UFED license? It's either you go in here or you... Uh, there's supposed to be something that says activate for PC and there's just not here. No matter where you look around, I don't... I can't seem to find it. This seems to try to connect to the internet. Which... It, or no, this one I think loads up a bootloader. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I wonder if I can tell it to... Huh. Well, either way... I think it's time to actually connect this thing to the internet and see what happens. So let's give this thing an IP by connecting it to the network. Blinky lights. Okay, blinky lights. Okay, so uh, it's starting up and let's try and run the system update because it's com been complaining that it's been out of date since I got this thing. Chances are when I update it, it's just going to completely just brick the device because the um, the license is just so old, but let's see, let's see what happens. Upgrade. Okay, so I think it loads like a bootloader type upgrade thing. Okay, HTTP server. Upgrade failed. Okay. <laughs> it's possible it's not set up for DHCP, so um, let's go into the settings and see what we can find in there. It's possible it's just, you know, no address, so it can't communicate to the HTTP server. And it usually complains about the license when it starts up. So let's see if uh, there's an option to upgrade straight from, from startup. Okay. Uh, services. Network settings. LAN 90. Okay. No, no, it's set to, uh, it's set to dyna dynamic. So let's just make sure it's set everything. Is there any way to view the IP settings in this thing? <laughs> uh, 
uh, in here there's um, a couple tools to remove the client that it installs when you when you run an extraction on an Android machine or a Windows mobile uh, machine or phone it will actually use the de um, developer mode on Android to install an actual application and run it and that's what does the extracting so uh, this is just an option to disable it or sorry remove it and there's also some other stuff for um, GPS units and CDMA stuff but we'll go back to services event settings client covert mode I believe hides the application that it installs on um, Android units report oh, okay so oh that's interesting you could generate hashes and whatnot for it for the reports report information oh okay so you can actually set all of this information for the report before you do it global settings extract sim after phone compressed volume size huh know what these do it this must request I say I assume this is um, it does a separate operation to extract the data from the sim but I'm not positive on that extraction setting. Ooh. oh that's already on <laughs> I was gonna say that'd be interesting but it's already on okay so I don't see anything that says connectivity oh auto detect phones yay user interface definitely do not want to restore the uh, factory defaults on this thing because I have no idea what the original keys and stuff are for this thing all right so here's here's the info on my license as you can see it's well expired but I might try just checking the um, let me check my my router and see if it's even showing up as a DHCP device okay so now I've got it uh, restarted again and this time it is complaining about the uh, the license on startup but it's still back to this and it does seem to still work so what I'm gonna do is change the network settings to static oh it's this oh no sorry that's the current time I was gonna say it says the uh, thing is up to date, but I don't think that's actually true. So I'm going to attempt to upgrade image now. Let's see if this works. It's possible that the server itself just doesn't exist anymore. They may use a totally different system for the newer, the newer units, one of which I have here. Although it's not the um, forensic one. But I think it might just be that the server just doesn't exist anymore. Okay, so this one doesn't do internet updates. Oh god, it has to reboot again. So I've dug around in the menus a bit more and I found some settings for auto updates. You can update either through FTP or HTTP. Uh, there are no FTP servers set. There is, however, an HTTP server set. So if we look at this, this is the actual address and we'll cancel out of this. Oh, F3, 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 no. And get out of here. Okay, so auto update, I turned it on for the hell of it. Um, activate license. License from server. I think we did this already. But let's go back. Now that we have a static IP on this thing, let's try upgrading application now and we'll try the uh, HTTP upgrade. No. Okay, so it must just be failing to communicate to the server. If anyone has any information, like a license key or something that they're not using for one of these, uh, that would be most appreciated, or, or even like a firmware update file. Uh, the website they have is kind of tricky to navigate, and they don't, it doesn't seem like they have a lot of support for older stuff. It may 
just be that they want you to go through their automated system, but it doesn't seem to work all too well. And uh, yeah, I thought I had more phones to mess around with. I have a lot of Android phones that I've kind of built up in these um, auctions I've been winning. Or, well, I didn't win that many, but a couple of them I won. And uh, I just got a whole bunch of phones for next to nothing. And uh, yeah, I can't break into Android phones on this thing. And I was kind of hoping to get the updated version so I could show that. One thing I haven't tried is the memory extraction. I don't actually have a device that this supports. And actually, you know what? I might have a 3GS somewhere. Uh, I'll do a follow-up video if I find an old iPhone to test this out on. So this thing does actually do extraction, uh, password extraction for Apple devices. The catch is, one, they're older devices. As you can see, it only goes to the iPhone 3G. But... Uh, the main thing is, is it doesn't actually extract the password from the phone. What it's doing is it's extracting the password from a saved file. So what you would need is a backup from their home computer. And the home computer's backup file, it could read the data from it and extract the basically extract the password from the actual um, save file. It can't get it directly from the phone. So if you find just a phone, it's useless. You'd actually have to get the person's computer as well and hope that they've made backups. And chances are, if you can get into the backups, you're or like onto the computer, you're probably going to find everything you need anyway. But um, yeah, blah, 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 blah. And this, this is actually a very important warning because it, it mentions that it alters files on the phone. So that could be a big deal when talking about um, editing, ed evidence, tampering with evidence in some way. But yeah, I don't, obviously don't have an iPhone hooked up, but it's, it's kind of unusual in that you have to load up the SD card with a file and then, <laughs> or a flash stick, and then use that to extract the data from the phone. And there's just absolutely no um, Android-based extraction in this, at least. If we go into Samsung, for example, uh, the, none of these, from what I can tell, are actually Android-based devices, with the exception of some older ones, I mean. There are there are a couple, I think it might just be like Android 1 and 2 that it can extract, where it just has a simple pin. But once they got into the more modern uh, interfaces, where it's like an encrypted drive and stuff like that, I think that's when this thing stopped supporting it. So like all of these phones that I have, that have encryption turned on, like this is a kind of modern LG. I say that, but it's it's still pretty old. But uh, it, it still won't extract from that. And uh, like I said, I don't know what I don't know what the memory extraction thing does. Uh, you can just clone SIM cards and stuff like that. And uh, I think that's probably it for this. I may do a follow up video when I get some more phones to to mess around with. And uh, set counters. Why would you want to set the counters? Huh. Password. Hang on. Well, I tried using the default password, which is uh, admin333, according to the manual, and it did not work. So, I guess they've changed the password on this thing for the counter reset. I did some poking around with the software again, and I cannot find the PC version of the software update. It does mention it in the manual, but it it's either part of the main program which I can't access because I can't generate the the serial number for it or it's just not in the version I have because there are differences between what the manual is telling me and what everything else is what the actual user interface is telling me uh, unless there's some version difference because like I said there's no PC activation code thing in this so it's possible this is a weird firmware version compared to what's on the CD and blah 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 who knows so who cares? Uh, I'm just gonna have to wait until we get um, someone. Someone lets me know what a either the server is. If someone knows the actual address for the server that I can manually enter. If mine is wrong, or where to find the code to generate it, because I just can't find it in here. Or uh, if someone has a license key, a more up-to-date license key, that would be good too. But until then, we'll have to wait.